Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be taking a look at Phantasmagoria, which is a sword and planet zine put out by Chance Phillips and designed for the Dungeon Crawl Classics RPG. Before we get started, though, a quick shout out to Arcanus Dragon, the most recent high level patron over on my Patreon. Thank you so much for helping to support the channel and keeping this whole project going. I really appreciate it. Here is the back of our product here. So this is a short little product. I hope it is part of a series. This does say number one, and it begins to flesh out this particular setting that Chance Phillips has created here. The sword and planet theme of it evokes things like John Carter of Mars, perhaps maybe a bit of Star Wars. Uh, I mean, Star Wars is kind of sword and planet already, right? It's got laser swords and princesses and, and magic. So it, it fits the genre. Um, but it also has other things in it that feel more pulpy and more old school, like, as I mentioned, the Edgar Rice Burroughs stories. Uh, and that's not too surprising, given the way that DCC really focuses on Appendix N and, inspired by, and it's inspired by things from that era of fantasy. To start off with, there's a lot of really excellent art in this book. Um, the cover is done by Luca Reitz. And the interior artwork is done by a variety of people. This one was, let's see here, Penny Melgareo. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Great piece of art. So it starts off with some new classes that you can be in this setting. We have automatons, which get a variety of modules that can, they can implant in themselves. Along with, of course, malfunctions that can occur to offset that. We also have captains, which is a great class if you are into dueling. Now, dueling is not a thing that we see very often in D&D-like games, mostly because it has fairly abstracted combat. But this adds a number of mechanics and special combat abilities that allow you to really do a more cinematic duel. So you can disarm or disorient or, or feint and, and so on. Now, I should point out right away that if you don't know too much about the system, Dungeon Crawl Classics, I have done a review of it previously. In fact, I think it was one of my first reviews. Um, I'll put a link to it right up here so you can check that out if you want to. We have gremlins, which are little goblin-like creatures that are especially adept at dealing with technology. One of their main things is that they can... Uh, uh, sabotage other devices, which makes a lot of sense in a setting full of spaceships. And so anything that involves um, mechanics and uh, machinery, you can use your gremlin to set up traps essentially within that. And the higher that you roll here on this table, the more effective that is going to be. We also have Jovians, which are sort of a race from a gas giant. They have the ability to float around for a little bit if they can inflate their air sacs. And we have Star Princes, which is a really flavorful class that I like quite a bit. Basically, the principle here is that, there's a little bit of a description here, there's a distinction between stars and suns in this setting. If you look up in the sky, most of the things that you see, they might be stars or they might be suns. If it's a sun, it's like our sun, a gigantic ball of flaming gas, but some of them are stars, which are distinct entities. They are smaller and they are intelligent, and they can become actual characters. Another great illustration here. Um, star princes start at level six, so they are not appropriate for starting characters. However, if you're in a group that is already at a fairly high level, you can st uh, be a star prince and bring them in at that point. They'll fit better in with the rest of the group. They have a number of subtypes, like being a red dwarf or a red giant, a super giant or a white dwarf that have additional flavor that goes along with them. And of course, they glow with the heat of the sun that they used to be. It's just wonderfully evocative, and it really drives home the kind of setting that this is. We have a number of new weapons, including stuff like chain swords, uh, laser rifles, and things like that. Some of them have new mechanics that come along with them to add a little bit more differentiation. We have a variety of armor types, including weird stuff like fungal armor, nanofiber suits, power armor, and so on. It does have a personal force field, but one thing I think that was left out here that I would have loved to see is if the personal force field worked like it does in Dune. Uh, in Dune, everyone has personal force fields, and the twist to them is that they deflect projectiles extremely easily, but melee weapons are slow enough that they can penetrate the force field and injure the wearer. That gives it an interesting tactical trade-off that I think would be really fun. That would be easy to hack in here if you wanted to. 
a variety of new types of equipment and occupations. Dungeon Crawl Classics is famous for the funnel, which is when you take a whole bunch of level zero characters. Usually each player creates like four level zero characters. And these aren't adventurers. They're just commoners, essentially. Normal people like cartographers or cultists or drug mules or, or what have you. And they're run through a trial by fire, a dangerous adventure that kills off most of them. But the ones that survive to the other end, those are the people who have that spark where perhaps they could actually rise to become a level one adventurer. And then you can take them on from there. So it's great to have these occupations. Not only does it allow you to run a funnel more easily, but it's a great way to inject the setting into this game just from a list of, a list of professions. We have some information about spaceships and basically how they work, their hit dice, how their weapons work, and their types of engines. There's a lot of cool ideas here in the engine where they take fantasy concepts and apply it to sci-fi. So for example, um, you have a solar sail, but the solar sail might be able to take in light from the future or past in order to increase the speed even further. Or a magic siphon that drains magical energy from a spellcaster um, as the battery. That's a great idea. A variety of weapons to use in space combat. Space combat is less um, sci-fi, and I think it has more fantasy elements. It feels almost like Age of Sail in some ways, in that it's often much more up close and personal. You're not just like launching nukes at each other from extremely long distances. You have a halberd, for example, which is literally an axe blade attached to your ship. You ram them and you start chopping into their ship. That's good stuff. And that's it for this um, zine. Quite straightforward. Um, it's not super fleshed out, but I mean, it is a zine. So we're going to have to wait for future issues in order to really see where this setting goes. However, this is a very promising start. Great production values, lots of imagination presence, and it gives you the stuff that you need to really get started. Character classes, professions, spaceships, the weapons and armor that you're going to need. All the basic tools are there in place. I think what this really needs next is probably a funnel or an adventure of some kind that's really going to give you a piece of the setting that you can play with. But it's already very intriguing, and I'm very excited to see where this setting goes for Dungeon Crawl Classics. I don't believe it has a Sword and Planet setting available, so this could really fill a niche. If you're interested in checking this out for yourself, I will put a link down in the description below as usual where you can get it for yourself. And thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys next time.